want to volunteer. It doesn't have to be a solo gig. Multiple people can do it. I can do it as long as someone else is helping because I might have something to say and then I like mess up and that's great. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, can we we we'll, we'll look for a second volunteer? Understood, Michael. Michael says he's uh, attending another meeting in parallel, so which does make it hard to take notes. Again, if anybody was happy to volunteer to help Aaron take notes, that would be appreciated in the note taking tool. Stavros, go ahead. I see you in the queue there. Are you, is that, were you raising your hand to volunteer? Uh, yes, I think so. Many thanks. Do you hear me? My video isn't working. So, uh, we, we can working. hear you just fine. You don't need the video. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, and for the note takers, uh, we you know we, we do have recordings, so it's most important to try and just get you know decisions, um, outcome of discussion, and you don't necessarily need to try and capture all of the blow by blow. So should we start at the usual two or three past the hour or? Yeah, I'd say we can start. I had just a crazy audio breakup for you for a minute there, Stephen. I don't know if anybody else had that, but it's on my end. Uh, I, shall, I can mute to solve that problem. No, no, it wasn't a mute issue. It was a, it was just like the, your words came in uh, all snipped up. No, oh, that's probably me then. Okay. I'll, all right. Uh, I can put in a headset if need be. It sounded more like network interference than like uh, local audio problems. But... No, okay. Well, okay. Do you want to uh, kick off? Yep. Sure. Uh, welcome, everyone to the OpenPGP uh, interim meeting in September 2023. Um, uh, you're, I'm one of your co-chairs. I'm Daniel, and Stephen is your other co-chair. Uh, thank you very much to the folks who volunteered to take minutes, um, or just to take notes, rather, which is Aaron Whistler and Stavros. Anybody else can click on the uh, note-taking link um, and help them out as well. That would be great. This is part of the IETF process. So you have this IETF note well here. Um, you've probably seen this in other uh, IETF contexts. Looks like everybody here um, have, uh, has, I think, been involved with IETF at some point or another. It's just a reminder um, that you should pay attention to these particular concerns, in particular um, concerns about uh, intellectual property um, and uh, being good to one another. Um, this is an all remote meeting. There's nobody in person. Uh, please take your audio and video off unless you're active. Uh, if you can use a headset, that would be great. Um, and if you want to speak, just add yourself to the queue. The queue is a little hand button um, in the upper left of your Meet Echo interface. If you press that, we'll see that you're there. And then um, either Steve or I will call on you. Um, there is a text chat as well. Um, you can either see the text chat in a tab here uh, to the left, which is where it says chat panel, or you can go to zulip.ietf.org and join the OpenPGP um, channel. Uh, and it's useful to be able to follow stuff there as well. Um, one more thing, this is a, the IETF code of conduct. Uh, the courteous uh, challenge, uh, challenge ideas, not people, communicate clearly, uh, use reasoned argument, and we're looking for fixes that will help them as a whole, not for any particular um, uh, party. Uh, and this is a working group, so we are trying to figure out how the working group is going to go. 
Our agenda for today, I'll give a brief uh, uh, reminder of the status of the crypto refresh draft, which is our only chartered work. Um, and then the main point of this interim meeting is to try to sort out what we want our new charter to be, because we are very close to the end. So to that end, we've got um, five presentations uh, from four different people about specific work that might be considered for the chartering. We'll take a look through the specific text that's been proposed. And if anybody has any comments or wants to point to existing drafts, uh, we can handle that at the end as well. Uh, I see Paul asking me for more volume. Give me a minute and I will try to do that. Uh, is that any better, Paul? I, okay, great. Okay. Um, so this is the current agenda. Any interest in uh, critiquing or adjusting that? Uh, not hearing anything, I'm going to... Um, it, and let me just make sure that we have everybody here who has submitted. We do not have Neil here. Um, otherwise, we have all of the folks who have submitted slides. Um, yeah. Yes, yes. I will. Um, you're, you're, you'll present Neil's uh, Web of Trust slides? I will do my very best. Okay, thanks. If you can raise Neil and uh, he comes in before we get to him, that's also works too. Um, and uh, Daniel, I have you listed there under the rechartering text because your merge request for the chartering text is probably the most complete, but that doesn't mean that we're necessarily expecting you to present it, although we, we do. I hope that you'll uh, chime in on why um, you made those suggestions. So crypto refresh status, um, we, we had an area director review, did not expose any major flaws, but there were many suggested improvements. Uh, Paul has been uh, diligent about responding to those and submitted a whole, uh, and also swept through the outstanding errata. Uh, there are proposed changes um, that are in GitLab, and they've all been tagged with the ad review, uh, a, sorry, AD review uh, uh, tag in GitLab. There's a link there. If you open the formal slides, you can click through to that, or you can just go to GitLab um, for the RC4 Daily Disk repository. Um, and uh, click over to the set of merge requests that have that are, and you can sort them by a tag with uh, uh, area director review. Um, the goal is to get this thing out the door. So if you see anything in there that you don't like, please speak up. And if you see anything there that you do like, please also speak up. Uh, we want to know that the working group is okay with these changes um, in response to the area director's review. Um, and many thanks to Roman, who is not here today. Um, but for his work on uh, on digging through that. Uh, any questions about the crypto refresh? So just um, wondering what our plan then is to submit a new ID and then give the working group a few days to check that that's okay and then uh, discuss with Roman if he thinks it's also okay to move forward, I guess. I think that's right. Um, Paul, if I recall correctly, there are also a few outstanding errata that you mentioned not having dealt with, um, and you're looking for more people to propose texts to correct those last errata. Do you want to speak to that? Yeah, that's correct. There, there are like, um, I think, two or three items that um, have no text yet, um, because I wasn't sure what to propose. Um, other than that, yes. I. Um, I will wait for a bit more feedback before uh, merging the current request into the um, into it, um, the mainline document, and then uh, I'll cut a new draft uh, for Roman to look at. Like most ads, actually prefer not to deal with like the the third party system because then they're not guaranteed that that actually got into the draft. So I do want to cut a new draft for Roman, and then he can say if we need another one. Uh, it doesn't really matter that we're going to wrap it twice or not. So um, so my plan was to merge it in. And if we think we've addressed all the issues, then um, cut a new draft and give it to Roman. Sounds good. Cool. And, uh, our, and Paul, any idea on what's, what's a reasonable timeline for that, just roughly? <clears throat> well, it depends a bit on feedback. If, uh, if there's a lot of feedback that requires changes, it will take some more time. But other, other than that, um, I would say uh, I really uh, want to get this done within one to two weeks. Like, 
I don't want to rush it too fast so people who happen to be gone this week can give feedback, but I also don't want to wait too long. So does that seem reasonable? Yeah, that's 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 that, that's great. Um, so let's um, let's ask people to to consider any issues arising. Look at the mailing list traffic. Look at the tagged issues in GitLab um, over the next week, if at all possible. Um, and let, let's say with the understanding that if you know if people don't raise issues in the next week or so, then we'll we'll move ahead with putting a draft and and giving it to Roman again. Right. Yeah. If, if I mean, if I don't get any feedback at all, I'll 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 try to individually poke some people to at least have um, one more set of eyes to look over things. Um, I don't really want to merge anything that that has only be seen by me. Um, but I will I will poke that and I will give a, an update like uh, on Monday again to see where we are. Great. Uh, and, and feel free to ask, I guess, myself or DKG to to have a look over with any changes. I, I'm I'm specifically committing myself to looking over those changes this week. Um, before the before the week is up that Paul is given, um, I have to have that in the notes, um, and I will also. And I noted that Daniel in the chat uh, is volunteering to look over the, the last errata, and will do so. I'm also going to look over the last outstanding errata and see if I can uh, propose text. So I don't think that Daniel or I will end up in any serious conflict there, uh, but you'll have at least something to choose from, either mine or Daniel's, to deal with the final errata there, Paul. Great, and our goal, of course, is not to add anything that you know gratuitously requires loads of loads of iterations of chatting. So, right, we are not looking at substantive changes, and we're, we're mainly looking at clarifications. And sorry, and one I'm more thing. Um, I I did talk to um, the ISG and um, Ayana about whether they would like to see a list of errata entries that this document fixes. Um, I wasn't sure what the common practice was. But it seems that because this list is so huge, um, Ayana specifically said they would really like that to be uh, a list in documents. So I'll, I'll add some appendix or we'll list all of them. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Maybe as, like as a sub. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Where, wherever you think makes sense. I don't know if it's in Ayana considerations or elsewhere. Right. Okay. So I think the summary then is uh, if you care about this, go look at it in the next week. Um, meanwhile, Paul, DKG, and Daniel will be working on it and will produce something to give to Roman in the next one or two weeks. And then hopefully we'll all proceed happily towards becoming an RFC in the months ahead. Yep. Great. Thank you. And thanks, Paul, for, for all the editor work. Uh, DKG, I just had a, um, just a, as a kind of level set on the, on the chartering. Um, I think our goal today is to have a good understanding of what we want to have in the new charter and then to uh, wordsmith charter text uh, subsequently uh, with a view to hopefully having a charter to present to the uh, to our AD and the IESG before the IETF in November. But that a good I think that I think that's correct, Stephen. So the goal here is to get people on the same page, understanding what people are interested in um, here if there are concerns about things. And also, I would like during this meeting to think a little bit about milestones, um, because that's one of the things that Roman specifically asked. Uh, if we're proposing a chartered text, do we have any idea about specific milestones that we might want to include? So, and I, and I think yeah, and, and for that, I think most milestone dates are fiction, as you all know, but the sequencing is actually more interesting. Um, right. You know, just pieces of work that people think need to be in a certain order, or are more interesting to try to get done first, then that's that's the useful thing for now, and we can we can assign fictional dates to those later. Right. Right. Thanks. Okay. So uh, I think we're going to jump into the presentations now. Hearing no other feedback, uh, so Eustace, if you want to jump in, your camera's working. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah. Let's uh, jump right in. Next slide, please. So it's my observation that the current uh, status, um, the status quo is that the standard provides mechanism and uh, is quite vague on semantics. And we didn't change that in the crypto refresh because we felt like that was out of scope mostly. And while some may think that this is a good thing for a standards document, I think that's wrong or it's holding us back. And 
as a motivating example, I have included um, a random uh, result from the interop test suite. And the test is asking a quite simple question, I think, is a signature valid? It's a binary signature. Mm, there is nothing funky going on with the certificate. Um, here is some data, here's the signature, is it valid or not? And what it mostly does is play around with uh, signature sub packets. And we can see that the uh, results uh, vary widely. And I don't think that's a good thing. Next slide, please. So I went through the open issues in the uh, in our bug tracker and went through all the issues that have been labeled as, as uncharted and put them in like three categories. And surprisingly, messages are the uh, least worst understood object. And I don't want to go into details. Um, there is lots of discussion going on in the bug tracker, and I think we should uh, pick that up. Next slide, please. Certificates are more interesting, uh, a way more complex compound uh, structure of packets. And I feel like here it really shows that the the text lacks guidance um, and again i went through the the issue tracker and added added a lot of points and then in the end i added uh like my pet peeves with it that i feel like we're not represented in the issues um notably the question is or like a top level question is under what certain circumstances is the certificate valid and how how does it work? You know, how do you canonicalize a, a certificate and reason about it? And notably, um, there is a matter of revocations, which uh, I think DKG will also talk about. Um, and what we think should happen is that we introduce two classes of revocations hard revocations like key material is compromised and you know no signature may ever be trusted again right but then again there are some soft rev revocations that could possibly be undone but implementations currently um, handle this you know in a variety of ways and that makes revocation uh, a brittle um, mechanism. Finally, on certificates, there is a point of what do you do if a certificate has multiple encryption subkeys? And there are different answers for that, but I feel like we should come up with some guidance on that. Next slide, please. Finally, signatures. Um, there is actually a nice essay from uh, Paul uh, from PG Painless, who who has a long essay, a blog post about what he does or what he thinks should be done to uh, check whether a signature is valid. And it goes into some detail on you know uh, what do I have to do with the uh, issuing certificate. Um, how do I canonicalize it at which point in time and stuff. And then a lot of complexity in signatures seems to re revolve around sub packets. And again, there is a lot of um, open issues in the issue tracker. And again, I'll say a few things about my pet peeves. Um, there, I feel like there should be more guidance about how many sub packets should um, we expect and what should happen if there is more or fewer than the expected number of sub packets and then you know there is uh, confusion maybe about uh, what uh, sub packets on the direct key signatures should cover that's also issue 170 and notably there is a question you know what 
do sub key bindings need keyflex or not? And I think they should have keyflex mandatory. Um, likewise, the reason for revocation should be mandatory on revocation signatures. Um, and then there's the regular expression sub packet, which is not, not a favorite sub packet of ours, I guess, that should uh, be replaced. And finally, um, trust signatures or the delegations, they can be scoped. The, the length of the chain can be restricted, but we feel like the maximum value should mean infinite, not like 255. All right, and that's uh, my, my presentation. I think these are open questions that the working group should address. Thanks, Justice. Um, yeah, so I'm very interested. Hi, Justice. Um, you were you, you were saying that you wanted um, uh, a definite finite parsing depth for ASN one, and then at the bottom here you're saying that uh, there should be an indefinite T sig depth. Do they not kind of pull against each other? I mean, if we're worried about exhausting resources, you know, like infinite... in general. Yeah, yeah, just 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 in general, you know, you know, is it really you know a good idea to allow for an infinite depth of trust signatures? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, um, the the evaluator could still decide to constrain the the search, right? Uh, yes, but then does that not become um, implementation specific and then we we end up having you know things will will you know some trust signatures will work in some circumstances and not in others um yeah that that's a good point we should take that offline i guess okay thanks so just i just added myself to the queue to ask um i mean how would you see this kind of work being done is it you know, a base base document, uh, or is, is it possible to kind of do this kind of work with separate documents? Or do you think you could start with a separate document and then see how to progress from there? And what's the kind of idea about how you, you know, how would this kind of happen in terms of um, producing outputs from the working group? That's a good question. So I haven't, I haven't figured that out. I hope you can figure that out as a group. Okay, so for the now, I guess for now, then what we, I guess what we could envisage if this if this work was part of the charter would be to that you know you or somebody would write it into a draft, proposing a whole bunch of fixes, and then we'd have to figure out how to dispose of those in terms of updating documents or new RFCs or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, anyone else want to join the queue to ask questions or? Comments on this this set of things. Uh, can, can I get a yeah, Andrew? Go ahead. Uh, sorry for jumping back in. Um, yes. There were a couple, there were a couple of other things um, discussed on uh, the list about um, the semantics of signatures. So maybe we could roll kind of um, semantics of signatures into a a larger document and then have a uh, like a semantics of signatures document that could be read alongside um, the the crypto refresh, rather than being something that would replace it. Obviously, um, I don't think anybody has any uh, appetite for uh, a best best document. Uh, I think that's probably going too far. Thanks. DKG, I guess what we can do is um, when we get to the, you know, when we get at, at the end of the presentations, we can maybe ask some kind of poll questions as to whether people are keen on tackling these topics like this or any other thought on how to organize that. Aaron? These initiatives should have like 
an owner or like someone who is willing to make sure that they happen and then some people that are interested into working into this feature let's say or into these documents as authors or contributors and then someone who is willing to um to review so i would split these three categories of people owners contributors and reviewers sure uh, just to point out i mean that 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 could be something that happens in the process of rechartering, or we could recharter to enable that to be done in the working group uh, under the new charter. So you know, we, we don't necessarily have to. It's nice if we know who's going to do what for sure, uh, but we don't have to have that a fine grained view of that necessarily yeah. before rechartering. Okay. Okay. So I, I unless DKG objects, I, I think what we'll do is um, get through the presentations and then ask. The, you know, maybe set, do some polls later on when people have seen all the presentations as to what they feel good about or what they uh, want to argue against. So I guess if the Aaron, I presume you're no longer in the queue, or um, grand. Okay, so I guess we we could move on to the next one because he's doing that now. Great. Yeah, so for the PQC rechartering, we have proposed this um, short text to cover the integration of post quantum cryptography into the OpenPGP protocol. As we've stated uh, quite a few times already, we have a draft. The draft is uh, uh, version two, it's published, and we have a repository. Um, where one uh, anyone can make comments public comments which already happened so there has been a bit of discussion and yeah of course our um, hope is that the draft will be adopted by the working group yeah i think there's not not too much to say because we uh multiple times we have uh, talked about this topic in the working group so if there are any questions or comments, I think it makes sense to discuss them. But from our side, we don't see the need to go into the details again. We also have running code implementations of, of the draft. Yeah, that so is, I, I, go ahead, Franco. Yeah, that is true. We have also uh, already committed code to um, have code merged into um, the RMP uh, library. And um, this is not fully, not yet fully supporting the V6 code because we only implemented what we need for PQC. But yeah, we have based on RMP and Botan, we have uh, running code on our side and Proton also uh, has some running code I know, but Aaron could say more uh, to that. Of course. An uh, implementation in Go that supports V6 and PQC. In an experimental branch, it's not deployed, uh, but it, it, it works with version 0 1 of the draft. So. Okay. And then, uh, so I think there's the, I think there's been pretty clear uh, agreement that addressing PQC is a, is, is a good topic for rechartering. Uh, and, and just to, just so, to, so I can understand, there's there's some separation between um, you know, let's say, wanting to address the record now decrypt later attacks versus having a full suite of uh, including, let's say, possibly even hybrid signature schemes. Um, I, I I think the reading of this suggestion for the recharter text. I assume that that means that you know the working group would decide those kind of issues um, during the process of let's say a, you know a discussion on adoption of the draft. Yeah, this is our intention to keep it completely open, whatever the working group then really wants. But uh, we think we should that should be discussed in detail and uh, with enough time for anyone to work into the topic and review all the use cases and the arguments. 
Great. Okay. So I mean, I think on that basis, I, I, I suspect this one is relatively straightforward. Um, anybody else want to join the queue comment on on this? Not seeing anyone. Okay, again, we'll, 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 we can do some kind of polls about these topics now at, toward, later on in the meeting. Um, so I think thanks, Falco, and we can probably jump to the next presentation. Ask me again. Next slide, please. So you observed that in in OpenPGP implementations or in the in the spec there is only one single interchange format defined. Can can I get the next slide please? For exchanging certificates and keys, and that's key rings. And indeed uh, Thunderbird and GNUPG can use key rings to to store their certificates. And the problem with that is that it it doesn't scale um and that's really apparent if, you, if you're working with GNUBG and have a large number of keys it's it's really slow and there have been some improvements for example GNUBG has keybox um which also is still uh expensive to access and modify and newer versions have a key daemon which i think uses sql it um, which is better but we moved from a standard uh, open uh, protocol to a proprietary format. Um, there is an extension mechanism in the form of trust packets. And the, the content of the trust packets is uh, implementation defined. So it's no suitable way to, to exchange information. And then there are some uh, other storage uh, solutions for um, authentication information. For example, Thunderbird has this um, acceptance table in SQLite, and GNUPG has the TrustDB, and those are also proprietary, and you can't exchange information using these mechanisms. And all of that leads to poor performance and poor interoperability. And if we look at X509 in contrast, there's been uh, quite a bit of effort uh, to change implementations to use a common certificate store. And the, the nice thing about it, that is that you can expect applications to behave consistently, even if they use different implementations. And I'd like to see that for OpenPGP. Next slide, please. Can I get the next slide, please? So our proposed solution is to have a, a, a storage directory inspired by MailDeer this is what uh, my certificate looks in my certificate directory. Notably, there is a default location. And you can, you know, you don't need to synchronize if you just read it. But if you modify the store, you need to synchronize. And it's indexed by primary key fingerprint. And there is an extension mechanism for building indices. For example, you need to do efficient lookups by subkey fingerprint or subkey uh, key ID. And currently, our proposed uh, text doesn't include that, but there is an extension mechanism. And notably, there is one distinguished certificate, and in fact, potentially also a key in there, and that's the trust route. And with the trust route, you can uh, take your web of trust engine and uh, you know you can authenticate uh, user ids on certificates you can 
add your own local pet names to certificates like you know this is the key i use for mom um, you can use local signatures to record provenance information and in theory you know if you can share this information because it's all open pgp data and you can reason about it with the web of trust calculus engine then you can have applications using different OPGP implementations behaving consistently. Next slide, please. So we actually have a, an internet draft. It's expired by now, but I think it's a good starting point. We have two implementations, one um, implemented by Paul, and it's based um, on PG Painless, and one is based on Sequoia. And in fact, you know you have you see two links for every implementation there's like a, a a low level and a high level interface for that and the low level interface doesn't necessarily you know depend on the pgp implementation itself and i'd like this uh, this work to be adopted by the working group and I hope this will lead to better interoperability and better performance and more consistent behavior of PGP implementations and applications built on top of that. Thank you. So again, yeah, any questions for justice on this topic? Uh, please join the queue. I, just, I, I asked in the um, text chat whether you're willing to have the working group uh, have change control over the document. Um, like, are, are you asking, are you proposing this might be that the working group would explicitly adopt? Yeah, I okay. think so. Makes sense. I mean, it, it sounds like you, there's, we have two um, implementations already from folks who are active in the working group. So, that seemed reasonable to me. Would you be up for proposing a little bit of text uh, into uh, the charter.md over in the working group admin uh, repo? Yes, I can do that. Great, thank you. Uh, since no one else in the queue, I, I had a question just as on the, the previous slide, I think. Uh, the... Yeah, so the, the, just on the trust route, is, the, is that envisaged to be something that the, you know, the owner of a search store uh, has a key pair just for doing this kind of management? Or is that uh, also envisaging, let's say, an operating system distributing uh, you know, a public trust route uh, along with a bunch of uh, other key information, or both? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, the original intent is for the owner of the uh, the store to to have a, a certificate and key to issue um, local certifications, with the idea that you know, with with the web of trust as a calculus, you can reason about that. There is no no special thing like the the trust DB or anything, um, and it just fits nicely into that. And then indeed the question is um what about like a system-wide store or you know what about um, trust you know your employer provisions a laptop and it comes with the with the trust route pre-installed i mean that's uh, conceivable okay but that's a, that's a that's a topic for you know consideration post-adoption that kind of thing yeah uh, and then, but the current implementations do have that kind of local key pair for, for individuals to manage their own stores, I guess. Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, okay, any other questions for Justice on this topic? I don't see anyone in the queue. Jonathan, was that a question for Justice or are we on to the next thing? No, no, just, just, um, it, it feels like this is very much about 
interoperability at a machine level between multiple PGP applications rather than interoperability between implementations on different machines, given that it's a file structure, which presumably would have to be tarred up or the transferring between machines is different. Is that the intention that we mul a shared store for multiple applications on the same machine? Or do you see it as more generic than that? Um, also, in terms of scalability, what happens if you have a large key store? It looks like you're a flat directory rather than any form of nested thing. And I assume there's more details in the documents about indices, right? Because things like user ID lookups, sub key lookups all seem to be important things to improve performance of. Yes, indeed. Um, so yeah, it's about interoperability between between programs. It's about um, reducing vendor lock-in and you know, enabling more <laughs> competition in a good way. Um, and indeed, uh, there, there should be indices for, you know, subkey uh, handles or user IDs. And that's currently, or the, the current spec says it's out of scope, but there is this extension mechanism. So we hope that people will experiment with that and then specify an I don't know, an SQLite schema or something, and then we will potentially later on adopt that. Okay. It, it, it seems like it moves the working group into the realm of much more application level discussions rather than protocol level discussions. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but I think it is a shift between some of the stuff we're discussing in terms of how things interoperate over the wire to you know, how, how things should be implemented. Right, and in terms of scalability, so we looked at what Git does, um, and we split off the first two hex uh, digits and used that as a subdirectory index. Okay. And we we figured if it if it scales for Git, then it will probably scale for us. I think you have a typo in your slide. Then you got CB and CD, which didn't make it obvious that it was a split height. <laughs> Thanks. So, uh, uh, just as a as a note, um, maybe other folks with more IETF experience can weigh in on this. But um, I agree, Jonathan, that it looks like it takes it a little bit more out of the realm of sort of networked interoperability. Um, but OpenPGP is also a store and forward uh, thing, and if you consider a key ring as an OpenPGP object, it's not entirely unreasonable to ask about how we construct these things to be interoperable within a machine or even within like a tarball as part of a backup or something like that. Um, so I don't I don't think that it's impossible to imagine the IETF working on something like this, although I agree with you it would be unusual. And that's also me. So unfortunately, Neil cannot be here today. Um, so I will do my very best to present his slides. Um, so OpenPGP defines mechanism for doing authentication. Notably, if you have a key that has the certification capability, then you can use that to um, create third-party certifications, um, which is a, a signature with the same kind of syntax as the binding signature. Um, but what you do is you you bind uh, or you certify a binding between the primary key and the user ID. And then there are delegations. So you can mark your, your certification as a, a trust signature. And there are two constraints with that. You can constrain the the length of the chain that you are willing to use to authenticate a, a target binding. And then you can constrain the amount of trust um, that that you're willing to um, derive from this delegation. And finally, there is a scoping mechanism. And currently, the scoping mechanism uses regular expressions on the 
on the target domain and that's not not the nicest mechanism but it's there um, notably what these standard does not do is to actually define how to authenticate the user id and um, or the binding between a key and a user id and there are web of trust implementations you know classic pgp had one and gnu pg has one but while there is some documentation targeted at users the exact semantics are um, not well defined next slide please and I think an interesting observation is that um, OpenPGP is a, a very expressive calculus and it you can express um, a variety of ways to uh, to authenticate bindings with it. And when we look at X509, you have this hierarchical um, way of doing things and that's actually a subset of what what OpenPTP, OpenPTP is web of trust can do. And the most obvious use case um, is you know to increase security by authenticating these bindings. But a very important and often overlooked uh, use case is to increase usability um, twofold actually. First. Um, if you're doing key discovery and you can authenticate the, the key and the user ID or your target person, then you can be sure that if you send a message, the target person can uh, decrypt it, or at least you, you didn't use the wrong key, right? And that's also a usability aspect. And second, if you have a key and it has multiple user IDs, and you can authenticate one of those, then you can show this one to the user. And the reasoning behind that is that the user ID that I can authenticate is most likely also one that is most useful for me to provide context or to provide, you know, uh, tell me who the owner is in, in, in my context because I was able to authenticate it. Next slide, please. So <clears throat> traditionally, or what most people associate with the web of trust are key signing parties, which is it's peer to peer, we come together a grassroots way of uh, creating authentic um, certifications. And a lot of people have made, uh, you know, have tried that and failed or have seen the process fail. And so I think this is where um, a lot of the bad reputation comes from. Um, but there are other ways to, to do that. For example, you can try to implement a federated way. You can have a CA in your organization, be it small or big. Um, you can have huge centralized public CAs and there's precedence for that. So there's the PGP global directory. And nowadays we also have the Proton CA, which is not for everyone, I think, but is for all the Proton customers. And finally, you can express different trust models using the Web of Trust calculus. For example, if you record um, when you use the certificate using local certifications, then you can implement TOPO on top of that. And likewise, if you uh, record provenance information, for example, if you get um, a certificate via WKD, you can create a, a local certification saying, you know, I, I got this key on, on this day and you can associate a tiny bit amount of trust with with the fact that you got this key over WKD. Next slide, please. So what we like to see is to see the semantics of web of trust in OpenPGP 
properly defined. And our preferred model is to see uh, the, the authentication problem as a maximum flow problem. So imagine trust being like water flowing through a network of pipes and the amount of water you can transport from, from you to your target uh, binding is uh, the amount of trust that you're willing to put into that binding. And that leads both to a good mental model on how to reason about that, right? If you have two pipes or two paths through the network, then that kind of combines. And it also leads to an efficient implementation. And Neil is the one to ask for specifics about the implementation, but in essence, you you use Dijkstra to find candidates, and then you use those to um, to solve the maximum flow problem on the candidates. And it's a little bit tricky because you need to uh, honor the constraints like uh, scoping, regular expressions, and uh, the chain length. And you need to be a bit mindful about not only combining um, independent um, assertions, but it leads to very efficient implementation. So our implementation scales very well. We don't have a cache or anything. It's just fast enough. And next slide, please. We, we have a draft. It's not submitted to the uh, data tracker, but it has the, it uses the same kind of templates. And there are two independent implementations, one made by Paul from PG Painless and one is uh, done by Neil. And we'd like to see the working group adopt our, or this kind of work. As usual, please join the queue if you've got specific questions or comments on this. Yes, it's sort of same question as earlier. Um, I don't see any uh, uh, proposed text for the charter. Would you or Neil be willing to propose charter text for this? You can yes. commit Neil to it also since he's not here. Yeah, we will. Thank you. Okay, I don't see anyone in the queue, so thanks, Justice. I think DKG is next up. Hopefully you can hear me now. Um, I'm going to present a bit of a uh, grab bag of OpenPGP related things that uh, were due for cleanup. Some of these were already mentioned by Eustace in his OpenPGP semantics slide um, uh, slide deck. Uh, and I just want to point out that I have created drafts that could be starting points for many of these. Uh, I'll point to them in the specific slides. I am not in any way committed to being uh, the sole author or editor, or even an ongoing author or editor, if anybody else um, is interested in um, in in stepping up to uh, take control of this. I, I, all of the drafts that are mentioned here, I would be happy to have under working group control, and I would very be very uh, honored to have somebody else uh, take over editorial roles on any of them. So, uh, without further ado. Um, this is a draft about OpenPGP replication. Um, so it started off with me trying to define this delegated revoker mechanism uh, that would be an improvement over the old uh, revocation key. Um, and as I started to outline why this was necessary, uh, it grew to be a chunk of problem statement about what replication is and why it doesn't work very well uh, in OpenPGP generally. Uh, this draft actually tries to uh, narrow the range of revocations that are possible. 
uh, deprecating uh, user revocation of user IDs and certifications because it appears that there are other things that can perform those effects uh, with the same. Uh, we don't need two ways to do it. If you can, if you can, for instance, expire your user ID, uh, then that might be sufficient. Um, maybe the, maybe this reasoning is wrong, uh, but I would be happy to have the working group at least tackle it, tackle it, and and decide, you know, yes, we can do this, or no, we can't do it, and here's why we need to keep those things. Um, the goal of the draft, uh, the only wire format change is this delegated revoker mechanism, uh, which embeds a full key, uh, that is a full cryptographic key, not a full open PTP certificate. Um, <clears throat> all the rest of it is either deprecation or, uh, you know, of, of existing pieces or uh, explicit descriptions of workflows for how a normal user would go about doing this stuff. Um, the goal is that it would include some test vectors for revocation um, and try to sort of standardize how we think about revocation in the ecosystem. Um, there's this other work that also was out of out of scope prior prior to this, um, which is first party, we've been calling it attestations of third party certifications. And I think we got some pushback from Ori Steel and others that attestation means other things. I'm trying to move in the direction of calling it approval instead of attestation, <clears throat> although the first version of this draft doesn't, it still says attested. Um, the basic problem this tries to solve is uh, that your certificate can accumulate third party certifications and can then grow without bound. That's a flooding attack, it's difficult to redistribute. And you would like to be able to take a, um, a certificate and say, okay, all of the certifications that are on this have been approved by the key holder. So how do we do that? Um, it's a pretty well-defined mechanism. There's already some implementations that produce it. I believe that the keys at openpgp.org uh, key server actually consumes them as well and will publish uh, third-party attested, uh, first-party uh, approved third-party certifications. Um, and we already have some reserved code points. So I think this would be a reasonable thing uh, for the working group to take up and just push this out the door. We have it pretty much well-defined. We've got some implementations. I think we understand what it means. We know how to do it. Just knock it out. Uh, user ID conventions, again, another thing that was deemed out of scope. Uh, we don't, all of our existing documentation going back to RC2440, maybe even 1991, uh, lies, uh, claims that the user ID is by convention the RFC 2822 uh, may matter. Um, but there are lots of reasons why it isn't exactly that dumb, nitpicky reasons. <laughs> uh, this draft exists. Um, I copied it out of the uh, merge request 23, which we've declined to include in the crypto refresh. And it basically says, here's what we think the convention actually is. Um, it has a simple set of uh, regular expression in an ABNF form uh, for describing it. Uh, and I think it actually has some uh, Python pseudocode uh, if you want to pull from there. This seems like a reasonable thing for the community to finally like correct uh, long, long-standing misrepresentation. Um, this I do not have a uh, uh, proposed draft for. Um, I just wanted to flag that we don't actually have a way to do a one-pass verification of an open PGP signature uh, in a PGP mine message. Um, the way that we did one pass uh, verification of V4 signatures is that in the um, multi part mine, multi part signed extension, we say this is the digest you're going to use. And that way, as you read the message, you can do the digesting and then you can uh, verify at the end. Uh, but now that we have a salt and V6 signatures, that's not possible. Um, this seems analogous to the hash salt. Uh, issue that we ran into with the clear text signing framework. Uh, and what we resolved with that one was uh, you can't do one pass verification of clear text signing frameworks because the hash salt was in conflict with other things. I don't think we'll have that constraint in PGP mind messages. We could add a salt uh, uh, parameter to the content type for PGP mind multi part signed messages if we wanted to. I don't know whether it's necessary, whether people care about it. If nobody cares about it, we can just ignore it. Uh, but people want to be able to do one pass verification of multi part signed of the PGP, uh, PGP mind messages. Um, and we need to write it down. 
how to do it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know if people think that's important, uh, but if they do, it would be good to have it in the charter. And then finally, uh, the stateless OpenBHP interface. This is an attempt to define a, um, an API that programs could potentially use, um, and at the very least, that defines sort of the semantics, the very high level semantics that we expect um, OpenPGP implementers um, uh, to handle. Um, at the moment, it's very much focused on the message bits. There's key generation and revocation in it right now, um, but it's mainly focused on signing, verification, encryption, and decryption. We actually had several solid implementations, which is great. Um, the draft at the moment has also sprouted a new uh, C library API um, in addition to the command line interface. Uh, the idea behind the C library API is that it's an API that should be possible to build the command line interface from um, and also be something that you could uh, sort of staple other language bindings on top of. Um, the C library API is incomplete. It doesn't handle encryption and decryption um, and we don't have any implementations of it yet, uh, but it's the idea here is this is uh, a way that we can, you know, uh, another way that we can try to think about how applications should use it. The goal of the stateless interface is to be minimalist while still providing all of the uh, high level semantics we expect people to use. Um, it is the basis of the interoperability test suite, as folks probably know. Um, and there's a handful of proposals that are out there to extend it further. Um, I think there's community interest. I would love to have this be a working group document and not just my own, uh, you know, kicking it on down the road. Um, so those are five possible implementations. Um, and uh, but five possible things to, to actually work on. So I see, Stephen, your comment in the chat um, that this is way too much work. No, that, that, no I, don't mean, I don't mean your slides. I mean overall. No, no, I, I understand. I mean, but, uh, my I, 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 are just you, I, think, yeah, I think that's the next topic. So, so not this topic. Uh, yeah, so I would be happy to hear any uh, feedback on any of these uh, uh, pieces. If there are things that people think that the working group shouldn't work on. Um, for instance, I see Daniel in the chat saying, does anyone do one task processing of PGP mind messages? Um, I want to point out that it's, it's actually not this PGP MIME question is not just, it's not PGP MIME generally, it's actually PGP MIME multi-part signed in particular. A PG, a, an encrypted PGP MIME message doesn't have this problem because you, the, any embedded signature can be done with a one-pass signature framing within the encrypted envelope. Um, so you actually can do one-pass signature verification for encrypted messages. It's only multi-part signed. Uh, that's the issue. So, I mean, I would be happy to drop this and say, you know, you can't get there from here. Uh, uh, for most of the time, the way that we did with the clear text signing framework, uh, because as Stephen said, there is a lot of other things that we could work on. Um, anyway, if people have any thoughts about the other pieces or this one, uh, I'm happy to hear it now. Eric? The SOP, uh, we, we use it a lot and it's very useful. Uh, especially for the for interrupt test suites, so it's it's one of those arguments that I have most at heart of this. Can you say a little bit about how you imagine SOP working within within uh, the working group as a working group draft? It's it's quite difficult to say if it would be like a living draft that we just keep on extending but never really publish it, or whether we want to publish a SOP now and then extensions further. But I could see um, basically it becoming part of the community work that, that we do to keep uh, OpenPGP running. I also don't know uh, process-wise. Um, I can also imagine um, with SOP, uh, and actually I have this, I think, in the um, uh, 
I think it's in the revocation draft. I have a little stub in that draft saying, how would you extend SOC to do this? So one of the ways that I think this could be useful is if we said, look, here's the baseline for SOP, and when you define some new mechanism that provides some new semantics for OpenPGP, you should think about how you would extend SOP to make that work. Um, uh, and again, I don't know process-wise how that fits in, uh, but I think it's a, it's a useful check on interesting ideas um, to be able to say, like, okay, <clears throat> here's a proposal, we think it'll work well, if we were to merge into SOP, here's, here's what it would be. But I would still make the SOP document, uh, instead of like having a billion little pieces into every standard saying, here is how it would work into SOP, I would rather have the authors of the OpenPGP revocation going, or the authors of OpenPGP post-quantum and going and saying, here, how I would imagine it working to SOP, into the SOP draft. Makes sense to me. Uh, Jonathan asks, are there any SOP implementations at present that can use a hardware-backed key? I am not sure that there are, um, but that would be an example of something that the working group could push on to say, you know, here's how you identify a hardware-backed key. Um, uh, SOP has carve-outs for special identifiers um, for things like keys loaded from a file descriptor, um, keys loaded from an environment variable, so it's not hard to imagine something like that. Jonathan? Just to provide context, um, I actually thought earlier this week about trying to implement SOP as a backend for various Debian-related flows, like Debian package signing. Um, and the bottleneck I hit was my key is on a hardware back token. And while there are a number of implementations packaged in Debian, there is no hardware back version. So I think that SOP is a great interface. I would like to generically move a bunch of Debian's tooling over to it as much as possible but there are actually missing pieces of the implementation, not in the specification, but in implementations, that means that's not possible at the minute. And, and just to throw in a related way about it, again, while you're saying it's supposed to support most of the common flows in PGP um, in terms of users, I think that one of the main reasons I care about PGP as a thing that should continue to exist is the web of trust. and our tooling for that is very poor. I'm quite interested in Justice's um, proposal from earlier, but perhaps not as part of SOP, but perhaps a different tool that was a common way of interacting with certifications might be worth considering as well. Okay, so we got about 22 minutes left. And I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing any objections. I just put in the chat a suggestion for a poll, uh, basically to kind of just get an overall reaction from the people present at the meeting to the set of things discussed today, in particular to the set of things discussed today that weren't already discussed, um, essentially to get a sense of, should we add the new things discussed today into the pile of things already in the draft charter one way or another, and then have to think about prioritizing. Um, so is, 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 that, is that okay as a poll? DKG, you have that? If I could just reframe what I think you're saying. I think you're asking, uh, are, uh, I have no objections to any of the proposed topics raised today. Right, but without prejudice to which you think is most important or less important. Right, but what you're really saying is like, you know, could, do we have a, a, a rough, can we get, look for a show of a rough consensus in the room that none of the things that were mentioned today are are unimaginable for the working group. Right. So I'm, go I'm just going to use the text I put in the chat. Um, it's essentially looking for a positive sense. So if you feel positive towards the set of topics discussed today being kind of added to the pile that's already in the draft charter text uh, in a kind of a union operation, please raise your hand. If you feel negative towards that or one particular thing, um, please click the do not raise your hand button. So if you feel positive towards adding these to the pile of things to figure out how to prioritize, then raise your hand. If you feel that we should not do that for whatever reason, uh, then please hit the do not raise hand. If you have no opinion, then click nothing. 
And we have 13 in the room and nine raised hands so far. If you give it like another second or two in case somebody is searching for a mouse. Uh, okay, so Daniel uh, is skeptical of the one pass processing stuff, and I, I, I think that's noted. Okay, so I think we can call it there. We have we have nine raised hands, zero clicked, do not raise hand, and uh, out of thirteen in the room. So that's that's a good thing to put in the notes yeah, with the numbers. Okay. So, uh, DKG, you were going to pop up the some version of the current charter text uh, again. Given that we have twenty minutes left now, um, I think maybe would would it be best to try and give a quick overview of what's already in charter text, and then ask for discussion as to how we prioritize? That seems to be the trickiest thing to me. Yeah. So. Uh, I was going to, the way I was going to do it was to look at uh, Daniel's uh, merge request number three, which is sort of the most comprehensive merge request. It doesn't cover everything. Uh, and obviously doesn't cover the stuff that um, uh, that uh, use was committed to proposing text for as well. Uh, but it actually touches basically the whole charter. I'm just sliding through it here. Hopefully folks can see my screen share. Um, it basically replaces the existing charter with, with new text um, and enumerates a set of uh, other improvements. Um, sure. I, I mean, I so think that's worth doing. If, if we can do that quickly and then allow some discussion of prior, how to prioritize, I think that would be good. Yep. So <clears throat> he's basically saying are, the are main the goal. Click on the three dots, and then you can do view at the current version. It, it's going to show up much better than the diff. No, the other three dots. Huh? View file at. It's very delayed. I'm sorry, I don't know which one. The original three dots you clicked on, and then uh, you, there's view file at function, and that's going to be much clearer. So this is the the proposed uh, this is the proposed replacement, right? Um, so the the charter. The proposal is that the charter becomes this. Um, and obviously, we can continue to wordsmith. Uh, You're still, still uh, sharing the old tab. <clears throat> you need to uh, share the new tab for uh, us to see it. I also think it's uh, in, the, in the chat. Yeah. OK, that's, 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 that's much clearer. Is better? Can you make it a little larger, Dickety? Yeah. Better? More yeah. large? Uh, that's fine for my screen. Okay, so again, we have, we're down to 17 minutes. Uh, so let's flick through this. We had some discussion this before. Let's flick through this fairly quickly and then think about how to figure out what to do when and, uh, and so on. DKG, go ahead. Okay, yep. So the main goal is working on improvements and additions to the OpenPHP format and ecosystem to address issues that have been identified by the community. Uh, it's broken down into uh, some top level sections, security improvements, new functionality, specifications of and improvements to network based key discovery mechanisms, uh, key verification mechanisms, and cleanup work. Uh, security improvements are PQC, forward secrecy, <clears throat> domain separation for signing in or encryption. Uh, new functionality is automatic forwarding, persistent symmetric, symmetric keys, uh, de uh, designated revoker might be delegated revoker um, to replace deprecated mechanisms, uh, attestation signatures, also should probably be approved, first party approved uh, certifications, um, uh, superseded keys to facilitate transition between keys, the interface, um, and then this possible uh, PGP mine thing that might get dropped, because uh, I haven't heard anybody speak for it yet. Um, and then network mechanisms, um, now these are all these uh, by adopting are, for example, doesn't mean that we have to adopt them, but HKP um, or WKD, or maybe we have some alternate uh, network based key discovery mechanism. Um, key verification mechanism, presumably the web of trust stuff would go into here. Um, 
and then uh, clean up work, properly document user ID inventions. Uh, produce a number of specifications that are adjacent to the OpenPGP specification and provide guidance to OpenPGP libraries and their applications to achieve the aforementioned improvements. Um, and this, uh, the process acknowledges, um, uh, uh, Daniel mentions that the, uh, in text that the PGP MIME might be things like uh, storing drafts in multiple parts, for example. Um, so for, uh, and then basically we're, say, we're saying uh, we need, uh, we will work both on the mailing list and face-to-face -face sessions, interim calls, IETF meetings. Um, we need uh, rough consensus on the mailing list and interoperable support by at least two implementations before submitting a draft to the IESG. Um, and we won't even adopt an internet uh, draft as a working group item unless there's two uninterested parties. Uh, it's not clear what uninterested parties means to me, but it seems uh, generally not unreasonable. Uh, do folks want to comment on the proposed text here? Like, is this a reasonable place to start from? It doesn't include any prioritization. So yeah, so I, I think that plus the other set of things we discussed today that are not already there um, is a good place to start from, but has a, a problem in that it's way too much work to be feasible. I think that's the, that's the big problem. I think all the work presented proposed seems totally rational, uh, but I don't know how you end up finishing in the next uh, 100 years. <laughs> All right. So, so please join the queue, and, and we really would like to get input on this as to how we down select or do something. So please join the queue if you want to talk about this. And Aaron, go ahead. If if I look at the things that were proposed, I let's say like most of them. I would work on a subset of them. I would be willing to review. So I basically say a voting mechanism could be by seeing who's willing to work on what, and who's willing to review and basically everyone just sends an email on to the mailing list and someone just collects um and say who like the the, the the working consensus and then sort by the one who has the most people who's willing to work on them to the one who has the least people who's willing to work on them okay that's a suggestion other thoughts on the topic I'm also curious if folks noticed particular dependencies between uh, between topics. Daniel? Daniel, go ahead. So, I mean, some of them, there is already drafts for them, right? So I, I think that's pretty strong evidence that people are willing to work on it. Um, then the, the two items under security improvements um that don't have a draft i would be willing to work on them and then the others i i try to vaguely order them in in terms of you know my subjective uh idea on on the uh you know importance but so you know um if it's too much stuff we could uh you know got some <laughs> at the end uh, especially the ones that there are in drafts for, right? And then maybe if if someone is still willing to um, propose a draft or write a draft, we could add them back later, I imagine. Uh, but yeah. So, so I guess um, the existence of drafts is very good. The existence of implementations is even better. Um, the challenge though is if you want, if you want a draft that's going to get finished if you if you have like 20 drafts uh, the time to finishing any one of those is ex significantly extended by having the other 19 because people don't have review cycles um discuss you don't have you know a focus on discussions uh, on one thing as opposed to 20 things so i, I think that's a challenge aaron question about having like 20 in the working group or a person that has 20 drafts uh, so if, if you have you know if, if you have a working group of 20 drafts they all go much slower than if you have a working group of two drafts yeah okay that's that's was my question thank you uh, 
I'm not hearing any inspired ideas to cut the Gordian knot here so far. Uh, um, how about, okay, Aaron, go ahead. As long as we have a sorting mechanism, then we can cut wherever we wish. We say, okay, the first five, and then we just do those. We just charter for those. So, so I think uh, I think we can have a, a broad charter like the current text. Um, I think that's quite defensible because there's a lot of things people want to do at some point. Uh, I think that the challenge would be to, to figure out a way of prioritizing which work to do when that doesn't get you stuck with 20 drafts that are not moving forward. Justice? So my understanding is that mm, we are collecting things that we like to work on, but that doesn't mean that they necessarily have to, to stall one age, one another, right? I mean, they can proceed at their own pace. They can, but the, but the, the, my experience is that the more drafts you have, the slower they all go. So if you know if we, if we don't have a way of prioritizing, it, that will also impact on whatever you think is the favorite thing to get done, because if there's twenty other drafts, everything slows down. I think part of the issue here is that we we have sort of a backlog, right? We had an, a working group, the working group folded, um, and then we had the crypto refresh, and we blocked other work on the crypto refresh. But meanwhile, the community kind of um, came back to life here, and so what we're looking at is the result of this backlog, uh, which is why there is so there are so many things. Yeah, I, I think that's fair, and, and, and you know, it's a good problem to have. <laughs> It's a, it's a much worse problem to uh, not have anybody wanting to do anything. Uh, so Kai suggests having a poll for each topic on the mailing list. It sounds to me like I think having a having a broad broadly scoped charter text is kind of right because there's a bunch of things people are want to work on. People are discovering new things they want to work on, and we don't want to have to char have to recharter every time something gets you know up, up the priority list. Would it be a would it be a possible to sort of say that the working group will only will generally only work on n topics at a given time where n is two or three or something and then you know try and stage them through that way we could try and figure a way of approaching things that way Aaron I like the idea I like the idea of saying okay these are the topics that came up during our discussions and we will work at three at a time and that's it or four i don't know so, so that would imply trying to poll the, the, the mailing list for uh, people's top three or top four topics from those that have been discussed so far and then working through those as you know as one gets towards completion going to the next stavros yeah thanks um just uh, to put something into perspective, uh, so uh, um, I'm one of the co-authors of the PQC draft, and uh, it's it's a funded BSI project. So Falco <laughs> is getting paid for doing this, uh, but the problem with BSI projects are they end at some point. So I think our project ends in one and a half years. My intention is not to push you and to say put please PQC on the top of the list, but just to remind you that we have some kind of a time schedule there. And we would really like uh, to support you with this project, but it would have to fit uh, into this timeline. Um, doesn't, it isn't really a showstopper there because I think I would continue work on that, uh, but I guess the, the work on the PQC draft would slow down a little when the project ends. Sure. I, I just want to... Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm I'm, uh, I'm well used to funding that 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 terminates. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I don't want to uh, put you under pressure or push you or anything. I just wanted to uh, um, say that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's Thanks. a useful input. Um, yeah. So DKG, would you be happy with the idea of having a broad, just like a broadly scoped bit of charter text? And then having a kind of a process where we, uh, in the next short while, ask for people's top three or four. And then as work proceeds, 
and continue to see what's the next thing people want to work on. Uh, that makes sense to me. Uh, are you are you proposing, Stephen, then that we would take, for example, the the proposal from Daniel that we're looking at on the screen here, and uh, actually remove some of the specifics? No, no I'm proposing we I'm proposing we add to we add more examples, but that everything becomes an example. Okay. And that then we poll the working group to see of all those things that are credible, all of which are credible, what's your top three or four? And see, does consensus emerge as to you know the, the top three or four things to start with? And then we also propose that uh, going forward, the working group would kind of rerun that process periodically. I, I think that makes sense. Um, we also want to ask, like, who's willing to be the drivers for the drafts, right? It's not just everybody sure. thinks this draft should get done, but nobody's willing to actually, you know, <laughs> be the editor. Yeah, yeah, we'd have to figure uh, some way to ask the question sensibly. But yeah, Aaron. Yeah, this makes it hard with the milestones. Though. Uh, if we want to put a large chart of text and then say, okay, uh, we limit the work to five. We might still want to, at least for some of the items, say, OK, uh, did you see we want to work it in the next year or year and a half? And then, I don't know, uh, forward secrecy in the next two years or so. So I, I, I'm not sure I agree. I think I think what we the priority here is to identify the things that people want to do now. That's what needs okay. to be in the milestones. And, and the dates will be fictional. Yeah. Okay, so basically the idea would be we define a broadly broad, uh, broad broadly scope uh, charter. We add into it what is going to be picked up straight away, and for that we say, okay, this is this is the priority among the things that we decided to pick up now. Yes, yeah, so the priority is the list of milestones. Uh, you know, eventually when we get to, when we get that that polling done, uh, if a, if a consensus emerges. Andrew? Thank you. Yeah, um, <clears throat> it's just, um, I, 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 I'm just worried that um, doing something as simple as count the number of votes um, for, for certain things um, may block other stuff that people could be beavering away with. Now, I'm, I'm speaking purely on my own behalf here. Um, like, I would, I am very willing to work on the key discovery parts. Of this um and I'm, I'm quite happy to work away at those in the background while everybody else gets on with other things uh, so I, I i i wouldn't you know I, I wouldn't want to block people from doing things if say for example like i wouldn't necessarily be comfortable taking the lead on some you know on, on some of the like the post quantum algorithms or anything like like that so I, I don't think it's a case that the entire group needs to work on specific things. You know, we can split off into, you know, individual areas and individual people can work on some things and other people can work on others as their strengths and interests lie. And then we can kind of gather up and uh, uh, and review later. So um, I, 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 I just like to leave, to leave I, I, I wouldn't like to have something that was that's, that's really rigid in terms of sequencing. That's all I'm saying. Sure, understood. Yeah, I mean, and and so just to clarify, if we're polling the working group to look to see if there's consensus for, you know, a credible small or a list of topics, that doesn't mean just counting votes. That's that's looking for a rough consensus. Um, so it's a little bit different than counting votes. Um, and secondly, it, it's a, it's for sure the case that nothing stops people collaborating on progressing individual work that's documented in individual drafts that then would be picked up formally by the working group later. Um, so this doesn't preclude any anybody doing anything. I mean, you, we can't stop you doing stuff. Um, it's just a question of what can we come up with a credibly doable list of things for the working group within the next few years that makes sense. Because that that, that, we, we have so much stuff here that is 20 years worth of work. Yeah, um, just, 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 just quickly before I let, let Daniel talk. Um, just I, I just don't want to discourage people from working on things if it's never you know if they do all the work and then it never gets reviewed that's you know i suppose that's 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 my other worry but uh yeah. sure yeah i mean okay we could certainly put in some language about you know that this doesn't preclude discussion of other topics that related to pgp sure yeah 
Daniel? Yeah, um, to be honest, I think if you ask the if you ask everyone for their, let's say, three uh, favorite topics, I, to be honest, I think everybody will say something different because, you know, everybody has their sort of pet topics, right, that they're interested in and uh, so do I. And I think, so maybe rather than trying to find a consensus on uh, the priority and sort of the ordering in which things should be done. Uh, maybe we could try to make an ordering of when we think can be finished. So saying like, okay, the, the PQC work is already very far along, you know, maybe we can finish that by, you know, X date. Instead, forward secrecy, there's no draft yet. So, you know, we put a fictional date far into the future and just try to order everything that way so that then um like the the work of reviewing finished drafts let's say should still be somehow um staggered right not not everything at the same time but the work of actually um working on drafts and you know writing text and so on could still uh, go on in parallel for for all of these topics potentially, right? Sure. I mean, I I, I suspect maybe I don't know if Paul is still in the meeting and uh, if he has an opinion, but I suspect the IESG might kind of we might suffer a credibility problem with the IESG if we propose milestones that go five or six years in the future and that have twenty different topics. Sure. I mean, I guess then we could just put only the ones that are that we think are in the near future, right? Sure, and and we certainly when we as we poll the working group, we can make that part of the requested inputs. And to clarify, uh, we can change the milestones without changing the charter, right? Yes. So, as it's long as you easier. produce a set a set of near term milestones, that you know, I think that will give the area directors a better sense that we know what we're aiming for. So. Paul, I saw you pop on the queue and then out. So I, I don't know if you wanted to do that again, if you want to talk or not. But um, OK, I think that given that we have to wrap up, I, so thanks for all the discussion. I think uh, it's clear a bunch of people want to do a bunch of things, which is great. Um, DKG and I will try and figure out a way of polling the uh, the working group to see if we can figure out some you know, initial list of, of higher priority things to include as specific milestones for the next uh, two or three years or something that's credible um, and we'll send a mail to the list trying to kick that off in the next week or so dkg uh yeah i think that makes sense okay oh, and yeah. um, and then we'll probably you will probably ask people to try to respond within a couple of weeks um and then meanwhile uh, wordsmithing of the Chart, the broad charter text that goes above the set of milestones is, is kind of welcome. Um, and I please okay, don't I, forget I, to I I propose additional. Don't forget to, if you have uh, committed to proposing a, a couple of additional example line items for the charter text, please do that. Uh, and if you have an opportunity to review the outstanding merge requests that are marked uh, AD review, please do that. Uh, and if you want to take a look at the remaining um, errata also and propose text to resolve them, that's also a welcome contribution. So, Yeah, great. Uh, and, and again, thanks, everybody, for, for the positive discussion and for the interest in doing work. And we'll try and organize so that we can uh, have the working group proceed to allow people to do the work they want to do. And unless there's any other business, I think we're out of time and the room may close in, I think, one minute. OK, no other business. I think we'll declare victory and uh, we'll send the notes to the list. Thank you to the note takers. Thank you for everybody for participating. Uh, we'll hopefully get this sorted out in the, in the next shortish while and uh, talk to you on the mailing list. So. Thanks, all. Thank Thanks. You.
so DKG, just before you drop, I, 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 um, we, we should probably organize to have a chat in the next, maybe Monday or so, is that suit you? Just to see how we can kind of- Yeah, this that would work for me. Let me, let me just pull up my calendar while uh, everyone else is listening. Um, my Monday is pretty clear. Give me a second. I closed my calendar, trying to fit, to straighten out the the uh, weird noise I was getting on the streams. Uh, I've got it back up now. Uh, Monday, October second. Um, yeah, I could do. Um, You want to do the same time? I could do uh, uh, fourteen o'clock UTC. Yep, that works for me. Okay, I'll send you a note with the uh, uh, imagine it for the proposed channel. The chat. Yeah, because those Jitsi feckers require accounts now. I know. Well, they require one account anyway. <laughs> yeah, but it's sucky though. You can't just make up a URL and then you know. Anyway, uh, okay. You just don't have to use... Yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll send you a link to one that, that will work uh, without accounts. So... Cool. Okay, great. I'll, I'll talk to you then on Monday. All right. Thanks, Stephen. Cheers. And thanks again for doing the chair slides and stuff today. That was great. Yep, no problem. Okay, bye-bye.